Now, we'll use radar. Radar to bounce messages off the surface of Venus so that we can get computer simulations of the surface features of Venus. Venus, with its harsh and uninhabitable surface, presents a stark contrast to Earth. It is a desolate world devoid of life, crushed under a thick atmosphere nearly 90 times the pressure of our own and baked by scorching temperatures exceeding those of an oven. However, there is a lingering question. Was Venus always this way? Could it have once resembled Earth with oceans of liquid water and the potential for habitability? These are among the many enigmas surrounding our mysterious sister planet. It has been 28 years since NASA's Magellan mission last orbited Venus, marking the most recent venture to explore this intriguing world. While our understanding of Venus has undoubtedly advanced since then, numerous mysteries continue to puzzle scientists. And now, renowned physicist Michio Kaku has unveiled declassified photos taken by the Soviet Union, offering a never-before-seen glimpse into Venus. These extraordinary images are said to hold bewildering secrets about our torrid neighbour. What could these decades-old photographs, captured through Soviet lenses, reveal about the enigmatic planet? Are we on the verge of a paradigm shift, challenging everything we thought we knew about Venus? Let's embark on a journey to uncover the long-concealed mysteries that have eluded us for years. The space race emerged as a rivalry between the United States and the Soviet Union during the mid-20th century. It was fueled by the Cold War, a period of intense global tension characterised by the clash of capitalist and communist ideologies. The objective was to demonstrate superiority in spaceflight and it became a significant chapter in the history of space exploration. Spanning from the late 1950s to the mid-1970s, the space race witnessed fierce competition between the two superpowers. It began with the launch of the first satellite and reached its culmination with a joint mission between the United States and the Soviet Union. The United States initially conceived the idea in 1954, but the Soviet Union surprised the world on October 4, 1957 by announcing the successful launch of Sputnik, the first satellite. A month later, they further astounded the world by sending the dog Laika into outer space aboard Sputnik 2, marking the first living creature to venture beyond Earth's atmosphere. In the United States, the Soviet Union's achievements sparked public panic. The response to Sputnik's launch led to the establishment of a private organization to effectively coordinate the American space program. Although the Vanguard TV-3, the first US attempt at a satellite, encountered an immediate failure by crashing back onto the launch pad in late 1957, the successful launch of Explorer 1 on January 31, 1958 helped alleviate concerns. Then, on October 1, 1958, NASA officially commenced operations. However, its early years were characterised by a process of trial and error as the organisation navigated the challenges associated with launching both humans and objects into space. During this period, Venus held significant interest and attention. Our closest planetary neighbour, Venus shares similarities with Earth in terms of size and composition, earning it the designation of Earth's sister planet. However, despite these similarities, there are notable differences between the two siblings. Scientists and the public alike were captivated by the question of Venus's true resemblance to Earth. Could it potentially serve as a second home for humanity in space? These questions intrigued the Soviet Union, driving their determination to uncover the answers. The era of Venera missions marked a significant development in the exploration of Venus. The Soviet space program launched a series of spacecraft under the Venera program, with the primary objective of studying Venus's atmosphere, surface and overall conditions. In his book, Michio Kaku highlights the importance of the images captured by the Soviet Union's Venera probes. These spacecrafts became the first and only vehicles to transmit photographs from the surface of another planet back to Earth. The images provided invaluable insights into the conditions and characteristics of Venus, offering a unique perspective on a world that had remained shrouded in mystery. It is worth noting that Venus attracted significant attention during this period, becoming a target for numerous exploration missions. However, venturing to Venus is far from an easy task. 
the planet presents extraordinarily harsh conditions that pose immense challenges. Extreme temperatures capable of melting lead prevail on the surface. The clouds surrounding Venus contain sulfuric acid and the atmospheric pressure is so immense that it could easily crush a human. Despite these daunting obstacles, the Soviet Union remained undeterred, displaying their determination to confront these challenges head-on in their quest for knowledge and exploration. The ambitious endeavour to explore Venus began with the launch of Venera 1 in 1961, marking the Soviet Union's first mission in this series. Unfortunately, it missed its intended target and flew past Venus at a significant distance. Undeterred by this setback, the Soviet Union persisted and launched Venera 2 the following year, but it also failed to reach Venus. However, the saying third time's a charm proved true when Venera 3 was launched in 1965. Although it crash-landed rather than making a smooth landing, it transmitted valuable data back to Earth for a brief period before succumbing to Venus's harsh conditions. This experience served as a turning point for the Soviet Union's approach to Venus missions. They realized the need for spacecraft upgrades to gather substantial data. The spacecraft designed was revamped to enhance robustness and a detachable pod called a descent module was added. These modules were equipped with advanced instruments, including barometers, radar altimeters, gas analyzers, and thermometers. The goal was to maximize data collection during the limited survival time of the descent module on Venus's surface. But what did the Soviets uncover on Venus but keep concealed? To address this, we may need to thoroughly examine historical data, analyze records from subsequent Venera missions, and potentially access declassified Soviet space program documents. It's important to note that the Venera missions didn't end with Venera 3. The Soviet Union continued their efforts with the subsequent mission, Venera 4, which proved to be a groundbreaking endeavor. Not only did the spacecraft successfully reach the surface of Venus, but it was the discoveries made during this mission that truly set it apart. Venera 4 revealed a remarkable finding. Venus's atmosphere was abundantly saturated with carbon dioxide. Now, you may be wondering why the discovery of Venus's carbon dioxide-rich atmosphere is significant. Well, carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas that traps heat and with such a high concentration in Venus's atmosphere, it explains the extreme surface temperatures reaching up to 864 degrees Fahrenheit. This finding played a crucial role in comprehending the climate and geology of Venus. Additionally, the similarities between Earth and Venus allowed us to glimpse a potential future scenario for our planet if greenhouse gases continue to accumulate, serving as a warning of the devastating effects. The revelations didn't end there. Venera 4 also unveiled that Venus lacks a global magnetic field, unlike Earth's protective shield against solar winds and radiation. This absence suggested that life, as we know it, may not be feasible on Venus. This insight greatly contributed to our understanding of planetary magnetic field formation and evolution, as well as the habitability of other planets in our solar system and beyond. Each mission and the data collected brought us closer to comprehending not only Venus, but also our own planet and the vast universe. Unfortunately, Venera 4's mission was cut short after approximately 90 minutes due to the harsh conditions on Venus. The probe succumbed to the intense heat and pressure vanishing into the planet's dense atmosphere. However, those 90 minutes yielded invaluable data, providing us with a unique and valuable understanding of this enigmatic planet. Following the success of Venera 4, the Soviet Union launched two more probes, Venera 5 and Venera 6, towards Venus in 1969. These probes were equipped with smaller parachutes to account for the dense atmosphere of Venus. This adjustment ensured that the capsules would descend to the intended depth before losing power. The data collected by Venera 5 and Venera 6 reinforced the previous findings of Venera 4, providing further confirmation of the high temperatures, pressures and carbon dioxide composition in Venus's atmosphere. The discoveries made by these probes shattered the romantic notion of Venus as a potential habitable paradise and made it abundantly clear that the planet is highly inhospitable to life. Among all the Soviet missions to Venus, the ones most remembered to this day are Venera 9 through Venera 12, which weighed around 11,000 pounds, 5,000 kilograms each. 
These missions stand out because their landers carried cameras capable of directly capturing images of the planet's surface. Although several of the cameras on these probes encountered issues, such as lens caps not coming off, a few managed to capture and transmit the very first images from the surface of Venus. The early images obtained by Venera 9 and Venera 10 are eerie, featuring a harsh and rocky alien landscape that stretches into the distance, depicted with crisp clarity but spherically distorted due to the wide-angle lenses used. In 1981, the Venera missions continued with the launch of Venera 13 and 14, which featured advancements over their predecessors. These probes were equipped with sophisticated acoustic instruments that could measure wind speeds on the surface of Venus. However, the real breakthrough came with Venera 15 and 16. Instead of landers, these probes carried state-of-the-art radar-based imaging systems that allowed them to map Venus from elliptical orbits. Although the Pioneer 12 probe had previously mapped Venus using radar, Venera 15 and 16 surpassed it, achieving a remarkable resolution of about a mile one to two kilometers, per pixel. The images returned by these probes provided stunningly detailed views of the Venusian landscape, showcasing vast areas filled with impact craters, striking elevations and basins flooded with lava. And despite encountering challenges such as camera failures due to the harsh conditions, a few cameras on these probes persevered and successfully captured and transmitted photographs from the surface of Venus, offering a remarkable glimpse of our solar system's second planet. However, throughout their thorough exploration, the Venera probes found no evidence of life on Venus. The absence of oceans, lakes or even a drop of water highlighted the desolation of this world. However, the probe's investigations provided invaluable insights into the extreme environments of alien planets, expanding our understanding of the diverse nature of celestial bodies beyond Earth. Although the lack of life might be disheartening, the Venera probes unveiled many intriguing discoveries. For example, Venera 13 made history by recording the eerie sounds of Venus's winds, representing the first instance of capturing sound on a planet other than our own. This significant achievement marked a memorable milestone in our journey of space exploration. However, as we delved deeper into Venus's characteristics, it became increasingly clear that it is highly inhospitable to life as we know it. The planet's atmosphere is nearly 100 times denser than Earth's, and its surface experiences scorching temperatures. Contrary to the perception of a tranquil tropical paradise, Venus presents a formidable image with its retrograde rotation and the absence of oceans or bodies of water similar to those on Earth.